Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today, we have with us Rich Waldron, CEO and co founder of Trade.ai. Rich, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I would love to know a bit about the company itself. Since you are a co founder of a company, I would love to know what problem are you folks trying to solve that were still not solved, which led to the creation of this company? Certainly, yeah. So, uh, we founded the company just over 10 years ago now, and the uh, itch that we were trying to scratch was essentially the integration and automation challenge faced by so many companies even today. Uh, at the time of founding the company, we were struggling with trying to connect the stack that we were working with in previous roles, especially as most organizations, including ours, had shifted from on-premise to cloud. And there was kind of an entirely new paradigm of technology uh, and integration headaches to deal with. Through sort of setting out to solve that problem, uh, we had to build our application in a completely different way. It had to be, um, uh, be able to handle much higher throughput, had to be able to handle a kind of completely different type of uh, workload comparative to what had come before us. And what's interesting about the challenge that we sort of set out to solve, which was how to turn smart business people into automation experts, that's really evolved in this kind of AI era. And that's a little bit about what we'll be talking about today. Perfect. Thank you for the intro. And if I'm not wrong, you folks are making some announcement as well today. Talk about what you're announcing. We're excited to announce the Merlin Agent Builder and supporting uh, Trey Merlin Accelerators. Uh, what this essentially enables organizations to do is tackle the AI agent problem, which is you know, if you want to build an agent today, you're quite restricted on your options. You either have to build an agent completely from scratch or be reliant on the hundreds of applications that already exist in your organization, uh, with each of them having their own individual AI play. Whereas we see a great opportunity here for organizations to take back control and build agents that can work across the stack. Because the big challenge with taking advantage of this amazing technology really stems from integration. The better you can integrate the applications you have, the better actions that an agent can take across the rest of the organization, the more successful you're going to be in using this and, and innovating as a, as a company. I would like to go a bit deeper in Merlin Agent Builder and Tree Agent Accelerators. How do they help teams? Yes, yeah, so they help teams in a number of ways. Uh, firstly, the accelerators are the perfect place to get started to build your first agent or begin kind of the scaffolding process to get a customized agent put into place. And they sort of are as they uh, described, which is they accelerate the process of creating the agent in the first place. They're templates that also encompass actions within them so that you can authenticate services uh, and really get something working kind of straight out the gate. But the beauty of it is that it's all backed by uh, the trade platform. And that means that you can extend these agents in any way you wish. So we've seen customers build things like uh, IT support agents, uh, customer service agents, uh, and even marketing campaign agents that will actually carry out actions uh, that typically would have been carried out on behalf of their team, which, which gives them a much uh, broader reach. And so the key here is that you can construct that uh, experience visually, and then you can go into our low code builder and essentially configure and integrate these agents into whatever service exists across your organization. Now let's talk about the state of AI agent development strategies uh, survey. First of all, uh, talk about the background. Is this, this you, you folks are doing for the first time or you have been doing it for a while? And what is the idea behind this survey? And then we'll talk about the findings. Sure, yeah, we, we do these uh, surveys on a regular basis. Uh, we have a really large IT network and I personally spend a lot of time with CIOs of uh, medium and large um, enterprises uh, as part of what I do every day. So what, what we like to do with these surveys is get a good kind of finger on the pulse as to what's going on out there, right? How are, and in this case, how are companies dealing with the, the challenges that are presented to them by AI, which sort of simplifying it is that there's massive demand. There's a lot of pressure on uh, organizations to take advantage of this technology and sort of the fear of being left behind. 
But at the same time, taking advantage of it requires a certain amount of preparation and kind of being ready and being nimble enough as an organization to to be able to act on it. So the, the purpose of the survey was for us to get a a, a good sort of um, viewpoint on where people are at in that journey, what are some of the co common challenges that uh, organizations are facing, and then, you know, what is it that we should expect is going to happen over the next 12 months as this, you know, demand continues to pick up. When we look at the service, first of all, it's year-end, so it also gives a glimpse into the whole year and then also where things are heading. Talk a bit about what kind of patterns you are seeing, which is like common in the previous survey, and then what are some of the, which was, which even either you were not expected. Uh, so I want to uh, see the pattern, something which were shocking even for you in the survey. Yeah, I think that the, I guess the trend that we consistently see is this sort of race for organizations to put themselves in the position to be able to take advantage of whatever technology is coming around the corner. And if you sort of think back through the history of uh, automation, you know, that's been from uh, uh, on-premise to on-premise applications talking to each other, on-premise to cloud applications. You know, suddenly there was this big demand behind, we've got to get to the cloud, we've got to take advantage of all this new tooling that exists. Are we sort of prepped to be able to do it? Uh, and then in the sort of cloud to cl cloud era, what we're now seeing with AI uh, is, is this distinct challenge again, which is, you know, can we can we take advantage of this technology? Are we best placed to go and do it? Uh, and I think for me, there were two sort of standout statistics. Uh, the first one was that just over 40 percent of all the applicants, uh, all sorry, all of the responders uh, that completed the survey uh, indicated that they were actively trying to um, uh, create some kind of agent. Like they had a plan or they were working toward getting AI agents live, which is pretty significant when you kind of think about how nascent the, t the technology itself is. And then secondarily, over 80% uh, uh, indicated that um, they didn't feel that their stack was ready to be able to take advantage of the technology. And so if you kind of you know combine the two things together, firstly, there's this so pent up demand for people to create agents in the first place. And each agent, you know, is typically re requiring to connect to eight different data sources. So you've already got challenges with that. But at the same time, you know, how do we get the data that we have sort of spread across the organization? How do we ensure that the stack itself is, is ready for this evolution? So it is a bit of a race. It's how can we um, stand things up? How can we get ourselves kind of data ready? Uh, and then and then in order in, in order to take advantage of the technology, we kind of have to have a, a little bit of both things working in tandem. And so that was the piece that was interesting to me. It's significant demand and yet still a bit of fear of immaturity and sort of what the foundation is of, for, for a lot of these companies. If you look at these survey, the findings, how does that impact Trey AI? Well, how it impacts us is it, it kind of um, you know, reaffirms some of the, the thinking that we've had over the course of this year, which is you know, the, the challenge is at the door of these organizations to get something shipped. In order for us to determine how valuable uh, a new solution is, you know, the quickest way to do it is to get it into the hands of people and start iterating on it. And so the viewpoint that we've taken is, can we help people um, uh, speed up the development of these agents and give them a foundation to be able to go and build from? And can we build a number of tools that are going to help them do that, right? So things like capturing uh, unstructured data and being able to funnel that into an agent itself, having pre-built integrations that exist out the gates, so you can connect up the tools you already have uh, rather than trying to sort of coalesce them uh, some other way. And in doing that, it means that organizations are much better primed to get these solutions live and into the hands of uh, their employees or, or their, uh, their sort of broader audience and start to learn from what's working and what isn't. Because what we're kind of seeing in the broader market is a, a bit of a struggle to get things through to production, but then secondarily, by the time it does get to production, then you get the feedback loop and then you want to go and make the changes and then you want to go and kind of evolve the, the capabilities of these agents. And that in itself brings technical overhead challenges and productivity challenges to to be able to be successful. So the, the survey kind of underlines exactly where I think we're at as a market and equally the opportunity for, for Trey. AI has been around for so long, a couple of decades we have been using, but because of open AI, chat GPT, there's a new interest in AI these days. How are you looking at AI and AI agents? Yeah, for us, you know, we just see it as a, a significant transformation. And if we think that tech typically goes through cycles, 
Um, it feels very much a bit like having a conversation with an organization saying, hey, I think this internet thing might be quite big. Have you figured out what your company's going to look like over the other side of it, you know, kind of taking over or, or being part of our daily lives? And it feels like what we've seen over the past 12 months is a seismic shift in a sort of similar order to that. And whilst, as you say, AI itself has been around for, for a long time, I think the the speed of the evolution of late and then the accessibility of organizations being able to take advantage of these models is the thing that's that's made it significantly different. So we're now at a point where actually you know, deploying this technology or taking advantage of it and getting it to reason across all this data that we've been collecting over the past kind of 20 years um, uh, in many places is the part that's so exciting. And so for, for us, it, it sort of was a bit of a pivot point because you know, automation and integration is something that an organization is always going to need. But what's clear is it's also a kind of key foundation for to, to companies being able to adopt AI. And so we've really taken and, and made this this AI piece the, the tip of the iceberg for us. It's the, it's the most important thing in terms of how do we harness it? How do we make it available to our customers? How do we help them move on that journey? And then secondarily, how do we make sure that we're making the best decisions uh, and trying to figure out what the world's going to look like as, as this sort of uh, technology revolution continues. Let's also look at how are organizations currently leveraging AI agents. And as they do want to take advantage, what kind of challenges they face? Yeah, I think what has been evident is that um, uh, kind of knowledge agents has been the, the jump off point for a lot of organizations. Um, and I guess the simplistic form of that is where you have a lot of uh, uh, collected data, be it maybe it's customer service history, maybe it's uh, pre-written documentation, um, agents that are able to kind of work across this, this vast sort of swath of knowledge and then be able to provide an intelligent response to a question about a specific um, uh, thing, either within a product or within a service offering, or, or basically to be, to be able to reason across this massive data set. And I think that's been where we've seen the most success sort of broadly in the market, because that has enabled a lot of large companies to actually get uh, agents into production almost straight away. I think that's the thing that's been quite surprising for so many people is that the speed of actual production adoption uh, in many realms. What I'm seeing is also a lot of kind of what I would class as micro agent um, uh, uh, sort of setups where companies can take quite specific requests or specific processes that exist uh, within their organizations. And then they're able to actually go and stand up agents that solve, you know, sort of niche or unique problems for them. Uh, I was speaking to a manufacturing company only last week that was over 100 years old, and they've had this machine data sort of sat around for a long time that they've never been able to do too much with because it took too much human compute power to do anything with it. Well, now they're actually able to use that to start to predict where issues are going to be in manufacturing pipelines and where issues are going to be when it comes to um, uh, kind of stock and, and order levels. And that's an insight that they just wouldn't have been able to get before. And so rather than relying on it to be 100% accurate and basing the whole business on it, it's giving them a signal that they never could have got. And so I, I, I'm seeing this, this move very quickly. And, and from a maturity perspective, um, it seems as though you know, the, the size of company that has been happy to put these uh, new solutions live within really the first 12 months for many of them, I think kind of says it all. And how does Tray AI help these enterprises to once again take advantage of AI agents? Yeah, so our approach is, you know, the, 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 the platform that we're built upon gives organizations the ability to create any kind of automational workflow that they wish. So by definition, we connect to hundreds of services out the gate, and it's very easy to, to connect to any service that, that we don't already. Uh, we can handle all of the compute for the logic engine that sits behind these workflows. And so actually what we've gone and done is we've uh, built connectivity to every major AI player, be that a vector database, be that uh, AI models or LLMs themselves. And then we've also uh, built our own solutions, which for companies that haven't yet ad adopted a uh, an LLM or adopted a, a vector database, they can use our native solutions. And that could be things like our IDP connector, which allows you to semantically extract data from a document and do something with it within a workflow. 
And so where that sort of impacts uh, enterprises is they're able to actually get these uh, solutions stood up extremely quickly. You know, they can log into our platform, they can take processes that they've maybe historically had running and begin to infuse AI into them straight away. And actually, you know, the turnaround time can be uh, hours and days rather than weeks and months, which for me is the, the other critical piece to this. You know, organizations have to change. They've got to become nimble. They've got to get comfortable with prototyping. For them to get success out of uh, a technology that moves at the pace it does, you've got to be able to continue to iterate and continue to make changes. And that's where, you know, Trey really comes into its own because the workflows are visual, they're configurable. Uh, we handle all of the, the backend processing and the resilience that exists behind the scenes. So you're not constantly having to tinker with, you know, complex tech overhead or the restrictiveness of maybe using the AI solution from every vendor that you've already got in your stack, which creates its own governance headache. Can you also talk about the importance of having an iPaaS for enterprise AI agent adoption? What, what is the importance and role? Yeah, I think the, the iPaaS adoption is, is really going to be a critical factor in AI because, it, you know, if you think about what AI brings um, in its simplest form, it, it, it's a reasoning engine, right? It's, it's able to you know, take in a, a massive amount of information and be able to deterministically, uh, you know, output or, or, or indicate what the right paths should be. And that's where you get these intelligent responses. That's where it can quantify lots of information and do something with it. And so with, you know, what an iPass brings is interconnectivity between every data source within your organization. But secondarily, and I think critically, an ability to take action in all of those applications. And so when you sort of put the two together, you've got the genius of AI, but then the capability of actually being able to go and act on anything within your stack. And so without it, you've either got to build all of that connectivity yourself, uh, or you have to go and get all of the different solutions that exists from other vendors to play nicely with each other. And that turns you into some sort of AI referee, which you know, is a is a job that nobody signed up for and, and probably no one's really qualified because it's not something that, that folks have had to deal with before. So I think iPass is going to play a critical role, but at the same time, it's got to be an evolution for iPass. You know, it's, it's something that iPass is going to lean into. And I think we're seeing that across all of the major vendors with, with Trey really out front and, and getting into this opportunity very early. Uh, you folks also recently introduced the capabilities to handle unstructured data. Talk about uh, how folks are looking at unstructured data and the whole challenge that organizations face when they try to integrate it uh, while in implementing AI. Yeah, I think the, the place to start is, you know, finally, uh, there's a, a home and a value for unstructured data. Um, it, it feels to me like it's been something that organizations have collected for so long, but the cost to do something with it has been so high. Um, and if you think about some you know, examples of that, you know, data that's collected from uh, uh, machines or processes or, or services where, where you're getting things like throughput or changes in state, that data has been collected for an extremely long time. But to do something with it, you'd need an army of analysts to sort of analyze it and do something with it. Secondarily, some method of kind of cleaning it up so that you can actually go and utilize it somewhere. And so, you know, where I think the, the AI angle comes in and why there's so much sort of excitement around the, the power of unstructured data is actually AI can help with, with doing those things. It can do the reasoning. Uh, it can do the tagging. It can help with the sorting and the modeling. And, you know, that's very much the, the way that we look at it at Trey. We've, we've got a series of tools such as our own native vector database service. We already have a lot of uh, data modeling and data transformation services um, built into the product. And it means that you can kind of connect up to the fire hose of these different sources of unstructured data and push it all into uh, a platform just like Trey, where you can now utilize it downstream in either um, using it for, for agent knowledge or actually using it in a infused AI process. How, however you wish to use it is kind of up to you. But what, what, what it ena what's enabled by it is uh, AI kind of brings it to life and actually makes it really valuable for, for really the first time. So, yeah, it's, it, that part, I think, is particularly exciting because it's opened the doors for companies new and old to reinvent themselves. Rich, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about uh, Trade AI and the whole uh, landscape. Thanks for great insights, and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a privilege.